It's me, it's lean, it's brand new from Anning. The Anning 613 alarm clock. What? Yeah, I kid you not, this thing is an alarm clock on top of being a multimeter and a whole bunch of other things. And this little device even makes toast. I wish. Anning 613. It's been a hot, hot summer, hasn't it? Hope you've been enjoying it. Uh, just getting over a cold of sorts uh, and starting to feel a little bit better. Hey, brand new to start things off for August, the ending 613 True RMS High Growth Thermograph, aka um, temperature and humidity, uh, as well as a multimeter, the whole nine yards. This is a really kind of a niche, cool device from Anning. And you know what? It looks kind of neat too. Shipped in this rather fugly brown box with a big white label on it saying Anning 613, yada, yada, yada. Hey, guess what? It comes with a relatively nice little case. Cases are a bonus. Now, because the multimeter is so, you know, svelte looking, this case kind of seems a little out of place for a case. If you know what I mean? But uh, something a little more svelte, a little more modern would have been appreciated. But anyway, at least we have a case. Also get our standard Enning cheapo test leads. Seen those all before. And we get two types of user manuals, one in Chinese as well as one in English. Thank goodness, because my Cantonese is very good. Um, operating instruction manual goes through the whole kit and caboodle. There's a lot to this meter, a lot to it. So uh, I'm gonna touch on a few of the uh, interesting points in this review, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Spec-wise here, we're looking at 600 volts AC DC. Does high current as well, up to 10 amps, down to 400 milliamps. Resistance up to 40 mega ohm, down to 400 ohm, and capacitance from 40 nanofarad up to 40 millifarad. So pretty well has a good consistent uh, range uh, across the range, so to speak. Also does frequency um, up to four megahertz as well. And of course, diode and continuity. Of course, what makes this meter over cool is the fact that it has that high growth thermograph, just a fancy word to say, you know, kind of like a barometric pressure reader, as well as the relative humidity, uh, temperature, it, it does it all. You know, you can put this on your desktop. That's what they want you to believe and uh, have it stand in as a al alarm clock as well as a standard clock and all that other good stuff uh, when you don't need a multimeter. Hey, kind of cool. Um, yeah, so let's take a look first at this little bad boy, shall we? And you can see that uh, all plastico on the outside, no rubberized compound whatsoever, completely plastic, but that's okay. I mean, hey, it's an alarm clock, right? If you look at the back as well, very easy to get into that battery bay. Look at that. Two double A's, and of course, Anning, one of the few OEMs that doesn't send. Well, actually, they're not really in a well, they're kind of an OEM, but eh, anyway, they're one of the few manufacturers that don't include batteries with most of their meters. Ah, oh, cheap. But that being said, look, we have our mode, adjust, and we can change from Fahrenheit to Celsius on the front of the display. That's it, that's all. We have that little tilt stand as well, which, you know, has a certain degree of angle here, which is probably a little more than I would have liked. I would have liked maybe uh, a little something like that, but instead it's like that. So anyway, it is what it is, but still a half decent looking little meter. Hmm, I wonder how... Right now you're looking at that display with the meter being turned off. Yes, it's actually in power off mode right now. And there you go. Um, it's showing us the month and the date. Yeah, that's out of whack right now. It's, it's not November 22nd. Um, it's not a Tuesday even. Um, but it is five o'clock, so hey, we got something right. Uh, there's the temperature as well as the relative humidity, 64% in the lab. Um, so that's kind of cool. So that, once again, is what you're looking at with the power off. Now let's turn that power on, shall we? And to do that, we simply hit that one button here at the top. Or is it at, the, yeah, there we are, there, okay. And there we go, bada bing, bada bang. Big auto comes up, letting us know it's also got a smart mode here that's invoked by default. And as you can see, not too shabby looking. Um, pretty clear, uh, you know, standard liquid crystal display. 
And it's only 4,000 count. Would have been nice to get an extra 2,000 squeezed out of Anning on this one, but not to be. 4,000 count, three, three quarter digit. Uh, yeah, but I gotta say, all in all, uh, it's not a bad looking display. Even with the glare here in the studio slash lab, uh, it's still quite readable. Now this little anning also comes with a backlight, thank goodness. But it doesn't work. Yeah, it does not work. You hit the backlight button here, we're supposed to long press it. And nothing, not a pinata, nothing. Absolutely nothing for a clock without a light. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a car without a steering wheel. It's just, oh, anning. What happened to you, Q and A, really? So no backlight on this little guy, even though it's supposed to work, it doesn't. I'll take a little look at that later, but that's a downer. Size-wise, you can see it's the same size as that Ryder Tarot deck. So there you go. And now I'm not gonna read your fortune. And if you just had to compare it to a Fluke 87.5, there you go. Utilize that select button in the middle to change ranges. Here we are now in DC volts, AC volts. There we are in resistance and continuity and diode and capacitance, frequency and low current, high current, AC, back to auto. So we do have that nice select override for manual mode, which is a good thing. Funny thing about AliExpress, you know, I only ordered this a week ago and kaboom, it arrived just like that. They're so fast these days. I don't know, maybe it's post COVID they got their act together again, but man, oh man, are they fast to ship. Loving it, loving it. Okay, uh, yeah, so hey, hey, that's kind of a cool tilt stand. Anyway, let's start off with DC volts. Here we go. Oh, creepy. Hey, by the way, those included any test leads. You can see, yeah, those type have those inputs like so and tell you those are on there really, really good. Hey, after this review, head over to keeontesting.com. That's keeontesting.com for the latest on this meter from Paul Taylor. He even took it an extra notch and he tested the bejesus out of it. And uh, he put all of his good info on the Keep On Testing website. Check it out. Check out Paul, amazing blogger. Oh, it's going to be fun. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we're gonna stick in the other test lead now. And you can see, take a look at that. Yeah, they didn't give us those color-coded test leads. Uh, anyway, negative in the middle like so. And let's start off with DC accuracy. Let's start things off here with our DMM Check Plus. Hey, check out dmmcheckplus.com. Some cool testing gear there for sure. Starting off with DC volts, let's see what we have should be coming up as 5.00 and I'm coming at 5.01. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. We're going to stay with our DMM check here and check out resistance. Now we're still in auto mode. Let's see how well it performs. 100K is what we want and 99.4, not too shabby. 10K, 9.96. Hey, that's okay. Just under 1K, hey, this thing is uh, not too bad. Finally, 100 ohm coming in at 100.2. Excellente. Now we're gonna look at AC volts because this is true RMS. Maybe not a deal breaker in the world of household use, but uh, still nice to see where it stands. Okay, let's put this into the AC mode. DMM Chuck Plus puts out a, a 5 volt RMS plus or minus 0.1% the voltage source. So let's see where we stand. 5 volts is what we want, and there we go. So, definitely true RMS. So, so far in auto mode, it's been pretty reliable. Nice. You don't have to just switch. You know, sometimes you don't have the time or, or the hands to, to switch on the fly like that. So being in auto mode and being able to detect the difference between AC or DC, uh, resistance or voltage, that kind of thing, it really, really can come in handy. All right, now we're going to look at capacitance. Now, unfortunately, it is not auto mode and capacitance. Uh, so we are going to manually choose our capacitance mode. 
So let's once again hit that select button in the middle. And capacitance it is. So remember we had a 40 mana fared to 40 millifarad range here. So we're gonna be checking on the lower end of that just to see how consistent it is in terms of reliability. There we are. Look at that, 1.006 nanofarad, very nice. 10.4 nanofarad. 105.4 nanofarad on 100 nanofarad. And finally, one microfarad coming in at 1.095. Hey, looking good. And finally, quick look at frequency. Should have a solid 10 kilohertz frequency here. And we do indeed. All right, Dow time. It is, it is. Here we go. Starting off with red LED. Lit with a forward voltage drop. Over to the green, same thing. The yellow, oh yeah. Let's go over to the white. Do we have five for five? We do! Forward voltage drop and lit. So five out of five in diode mode. That is awesome. Now let's head over to a standard diode. And yeah, we don't have any issue. Don't have that nice audible beep, however, but it's still killer. Output voltage in diode mode is a beefy 4.0 volts. Oh, yeah. Already locked and loaded. Stock default test leads. Continuity. 3, 2, 1. Hey, fairly fast. Latchy. Not really loud. Let's try the Pro Masters. Already. Pro Masters. It's no louder, but it's definitely smudged quicker. Oh yeah. Sixty-three point two decibels, maximum output in continuity. And that, my friends, is not very loud. Well, thus far. I'm kind of impressed and kind of depressed. I mean, it's performing pretty well. It's hitting all the bells, but, you know, not having a backlight that actually works still really ticks me off. Okay, so this off. is programmed to technically go off at 337, but I'm telling you, this thing is just such a pain to program. It seems to work sometimes, sometimes it doesn't, and I just about give up. But uh, anyway, let's see what happens. So it's going off. Can you hear that? I mean, it is so, so low. Is that gonna wake you up? I don't think it's gonna wake me up. Ugh. All right, here we go. Taking a look on the inside. First of all, take a look at top. Yeah, no shielding. Hey, no surprise, Anning. What else is new, right? Here are the two connecting leads that uh, touch base with the main PCB to give us the power. Once again, powered by two AAA batteries. Oh, I'm getting a little excited with my screwdriver here, sorry. Um, Interesting layout on that PCB. Wow, that is a weird looking PCB. I mean, look, they've sort of chopped at a 90 degree angle here, the board, for whatever reason. I'm not sure why, but it's weird. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, let's start off with those input jacks, shall we? Way at the other end over here. There's a good close up pick for you folks. Uh, take a look at that. Split variety, what else is new, right? Um, very decent. Soldering though, a little bit of flux going on here, a little bit of residue, could probably use a bit of a cleaning actually. Ooh. Um, one lonely PTC as well, that's on the uh, voltage side of things. There is our not very noisy relay over here. Uh, very good job actually, not noisy at all compared to some of those smart meters we've seen in the past. By the way, we have those four threaded inserts here, right into plastic, so you don't wanna take this apart too often because <gasps> Well, you have to start using duct tape. Here we have those soft touch buttons and HTC-8 version two. Here's our speaker. And right below that, we have our big tin can oscillator. 
Now, very interesting, it looks like we have a partitioned uh, display uh, chip as well as the multimeter chip over here, both cobbed, but uh, man, I haven't seen that before. That's kind of interesting. I like it, I like it. Um, here is our humidity sensor right here. here at the top we have our one, two, three uh, touch buttons. And uh, one of them, this one here, is the backlight button as well as the hold button. And that backlight's not working. I'm going to look at it and I'll uh, leave an updated review or post letting you know how that goes. But uh, that, once again, that really sucks. But anyway, generally speaking, uh, pretty decent looking layout all around. Very clean and uh, compact. I like it. All right, let's put things get, get back together. Ooh, I can't even talk. Come back uh, with my closing Yeah, thoughts. but look at how small that clock is. I mean, it's just so tiny. I mean, why, Anning, do you make a, 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 a clock multimeter and give us a clock so tiny? It doesn't make any sense. Closing thoughts on Anning. 613 clock slash multimeter. Uh, yeah, that's a weird combo, isn't it? Um, you know what? I am torn. I am really, really torn. Uh, I'm torn. Uh... On the one hand, I love the thinking out of the box approach that Anning takes once again, and gives us something oh so different. Yes, it's a small, versatile, pocketable multimeter. That's also a clock as well as a calendar tool. But that being said, I mean, look how small the clock is. I mean, look, it is tiny. Why is it not taking up the full screen when the system uh, shuts down? Doesn't make any sense to me, really. And you know, the fact that we don't even have a backlight with this unit that it's defective kind of kills that whole mm, altogether. Has an alarm. As well and uh, you know uh. now had Anning done something a little bit better and made the full display here the clock when it shuts down that would have made a lot of sense but for whatever reason they decided not to and now it just leaves us with a <clears throat> oh a meter Yes, it's definitely cheap, and it comes with a little carrying case, which is really good. But, you know, the, 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 what can I say? It's just not putting that smile on my face like I really wanted. You know, like when the mother-in-law leaves? Definitely cool, though, to have that temperature and humidity all in one little easy location. But, you know, it's just not enough for me to recommend this meter. Hey, the Anning 613. The little high grow thermograph that could have been gets a disappointing two out of five stars. <laughs> yeah, give us a full size clock display, Anning, and watch that score go high. And maybe a backlight that works. Hey, thanks for watching this review. Everybody, to the next one. Keep on testing.